Welcome back to Tam. Today, smoked salmon and spinach pasta bake. Uh, for those of you in America, lox will do as well. Oh my goodness, I am so excited. Yes, I will not lie, there is work involved. There are three different processes. We're gonna make a bechamel, we're gonna cook down our vegetable, and then the mixing element does require some work, and then we're gonna bake. But this is a great make-ahead dish, and we're gonna learn some awesome skills, i.e. making bechamel, which is the base for lots of dairy dishes. So let's get started. Let's make our smoked salmon and spinach pasta bake right now. We're gonna take tuna bake and knock it out of the park. Let's get started. There's a lot of stuff going on but totally worth the effort. So what I have here is my trusty milky saucepan. You can see it's been through years of experiences with me. So I'm gonna turn it on, I'm gonna heat up the pan, and then I'm gonna melt some butter to get our bechamel started. So our pan is heated. I'm gonna to add to that 75 grams of butter, and you could hear it, it's nice and warm. Uh, we're gonna let the butter melt, and once it's melted, I'm gonna add to that 100 grams of plain flour, and that's going to be the roux, the base for our bechamel sauce. This is what's gonna create this lovely, silky thickness uh, that we so want in a pasta bake. It's like the base of a custard, you really want richness and thickness and our butter is nearly melted. I'm gonna help it along a little bit because I have zero patience. And then I'm going to add the flour. And what we wanna do is cook some of the rawness out of the flour. And at the same time, it's all gonna kind of clump it together, you see? Uh, and that's what we wanted to do. And this is bechamel, aru takes a huge amount of elbow grease to happen, but it's totally worth the effort and you do feel kind of virtuous uh, for putting this much effort into a sauce. So once you have this paste of flour and butter, we're gonna start slowly adding our milk. I have 950 ml of whole milk. You could do it with skim milk. The results though won't be as silky and rich, uh, so you're already going in with the butter and lots of cheese, uh, might as well just splurge and do the whole milk as well. So I'm gonna keep on adding the milk a little bit at a time, and what's gonna happen is that it's going to get absorbed into that flour and butter mixture, and as it absorbs more and more milk, it's going to loosen up. But right now, we're still at this pasty phase, which is exactly where we wanna be, and we're gonna keep on adding. If it's going too fast, lower the temperature. There is no need for you to panic here. So add the flour a little bit at a time, consistently stirring. I said this is a bit of a workout here, and it's like this floury, gelatinous mixture you should be getting. And just keep on adding the milk a little bit at a time. You'll get to a point eventually, uh, about five minutes in, where it's not this ball of dough anymore, and it loosens up considerably. But we're still at the ball of dough phase. So I'm gonna keep on adding my milk a little bit at a time until the whole mixture loosens up. So I just wanna show you, we're halfway through adding our milk to our flour mixture, and we're getting to the phase where it's no longer a ball of dough, uh, but it's more like a type of pudding texture, and that is great. So just keep on adding a little bit at a time. It does require some patience, uh, but totally 100 percent worth the effort. So I'm going to keep on going, getting in my workout for the day. Uh, though I probably, after I eat some of this, need to do like some walking things. All right, keep on going. So at this point, all our milk has been added and it's a bit watery, which is great because now let it cook for about five minutes, stirring constantly until it starts getting some big bubbles, at which point 
turn it off because it has thickened. You could already see it's pretty thick, but I want it to get a little bit thicker. So we're gonna cook stirring once all the milk is added for five minutes until it starts to bubble. I've lowered my temperature to give it time to get to this process. So just a quick reminder, we melted the butter, we added the flour, then we slowly added milk a little bit at a time until it was incorporated and now that all the milk is in we're going to let it come to a boil but on a low temperature for about five minutes um, until it starts to bubble once it bubbles turn off the heat so melt butter add flour add milk bring it to a boil slowly and then turn it off and that is our bechamel we're gonna then like flavor it, it's gonna be awesome. All right, my sauce has come to a boil. I'm gonna turn off the heat, totally off, and I'm gonna add to it one tablespoon of grainy mustard. In it goes, let's give it a good mix to make sure it's well mixed in. And then I'm gonna season it lightly with a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. And this is like Chef 101. They season as they go. Like every single step, they pause, they season, and just that little bit of seasoning at each step actually builds amazing flavor, which then requires less of a like humongous amount of salt when the food comes to the table. So that is our bechamel done. I'm gonna set it aside and then step two, which is to cook out our vegetables. All right, so in a big saucepan, and I really like encourage you to use the biggest one you have, melt 25 grams of butter, in it goes. And once it's melted, we're going to add half a leek, which I washed really well and cut into strips. And we're gonna fry that leek until it starts really softening up. So we're gonna add the leek to the butter and we're gonna let it fry really, really fast until it's nice and soft. So it's been about three minutes and our leeks are nice and soft. I'm gonna add that two cloves of garlic, which I minced and in it goes. I'm gonna cook it out just for about 30 seconds. We really don't want the garlic to burn, but you do wanna smell it, and there it is. All right, I've got here a pound, 440 grams of spinach, uh, baby spinach, which I washed, I checked, I rinsed, I kind of dried, and we're gonna go in a handful at a time because the pan really can't hold very much but it wilts to like absolutely nothing. So adding a handful of time is much easier and I'm gonna keep on adding spinach until everything that's in my colander is in my pot and it's wilted all the way down. All our spinach has been added and what you could see is, I don't know, you see there's a lot of liquid that kind of comes out of the spinach from the washing. So pour out any of that accumulated liquid carefully. If you don't have any, nothing to pour out, but I'm gonna pour out the accumulated liquid and then we're gonna season our spinach with a little bit of salt and pepper. Accumulated liquid poured out, a little bit of salt in there, a little bit of freshly ground pepper. I'm getting super excited, sorry, so, so excited about this. Oh my goodness, okay, now we're gonna pile everything into this pot. So we're gonna start with 500 grams of ready-cooked pasta, um, a pound if you're in the States, uh, and I'm gonna slowly add it in and get the spinach to really make its way around all the pasta. So, you know, like really spread it out well. So mix, add, just make sure everything gets mixed in well because sometimes you get these massive clumps of either pasta or spinach so help it out a bit give it a good stir so i'm gonna add all the pasta to the spinach spinach and pasta mix let's add our smoked salmon i have here a pound 450 grams i'm gonna reserve a little bit of it for like decoration on top uh, but the rest of it is growing in and just like the spinach we want to make sure it's really well mixed in, I think that's good, and I'll reserve the rest for the top, and we're gonna give it, again, a really good mix. 
All right, so our pasta, spinach, smoked salmon are in. I have 250 grams of grated cheddar. I'm gonna add uh, most of it, reserving some again for the top, plus 50 grams of grated Parmesan, most of it, reserving some for the top. Give it an extra good mix. Make sure you get cheese absolutely everywhere. And then we're gonna go in with our bachamel that we worked so hard on. All right, everything's mixed and the bachamel is going in. Oh, amazing. All right, and then we mix again. Everything's mixed. Everything is in our tin. This is really big. You can absolutely divide this into two. They freeze amazingly. So this is a nine by 13 inch, 20 by 30 centimeter, but absolutely two small square dishes and this feeds a crowd. So into the oven we go. It's at 180 Celsius, 350 Fahrenheit, about 40 minutes until everything's bubbly and the top is crispy. You can see I topped it with that like leftover smoked salmon and cheese so we get a nice crispy top and into the oven we go. Oh my goodness, all the work was worth it because check this out. Our smoked salmon and spinach pasta bake is ready. It's done. It's amazing. All right, so here's the thing. Eat it right now if you want to, or you can make it into two and stick one in the freezer and eat one hour. Stick them both in the freezer. Absolutely make it up to a month ahead of time and then reheat it, like let it defrost and reheat it in the oven, ready to go. I am so excited. It smells insane insanely delicious cheese and smoked salmon <gasps> yum all right make our smoked salmon and spinach pasta bake ready for whatever adventures lie ahead see you all soon have a wonderful day bye so i'm just trialing our awesome spinach and smoked salmon pasta bake it is ridiculously delicious and the bechamel sauce that really does take quite a bit of energy is the making of this dish it is absolutely creamy cheesy smoked salmony heaven so trial it i promise you you will not be disappointed yes there's work involved but oh my goodness is this delicious all right trial it see you all soon bye